talking about talent, right? And the title is Talent Show Brain <coughs> Stage. So things that are require talent. When you hear the word art, what what does what comes to mind besides drawing and painting? Arthur. Arthur? Okay. <laughs> so huh? uh, I go like an active or like dancing because it's so active very Yes, so dancing is considered art. Anybody else? What? A statue? Yes. Sculptures. Sculptures, yes. I'm like. <laughs> yes. Pistachios. Pistachios. That's an art. Yeah, Picasso. Picasso's name has your pistachios. I think of art. I thought of it. No. Oh, pottery. Pottery, yes. Acting, music, right? That's all considered art. Now, all those things, you would have to be like on the stage, right? And Not perform all. somehow? Not all. Not all. Mostly. I mean, if you actually draw, you would have, you know, your things, your drawings in a room and everybody looks at it, right? But a lot of times you're on a stage and you have to perform, right? Okay. So, what we'll be doing today is kind of along the lines, we will be using the stage or the floor maybe, probably the floor. Okay, so, um, let's try this. Let's do boy, fourth grader. Do we have a fourth grader boy? There's one right here. No, Jack. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so fourth grade boy. Uh, fifth grade boy. Can you do fourth grade girl? Okay. And a sixth grade boy. Wait, can yeah, do fourth grade? Okay. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Sixth grade. Come on up. Hey, baby. Okay, now I need girls. Fourth grade girls. Oh, okay, we'll have two. Both of you. One fifth grader. And one sixth grader. Come on in. Okay. Okay, so obviously we have a stage full of very where am I talented? Get on this side. Get on this side. So we have a stage full of talented people. Okay, now I need I need a girl um small group leader. You're the only one. Left. You're the only one. And a boy is a small group leader. Hey, hey, get over here. Now. So this particular talent consists of dancing. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Okay. So I have two groups. I can do a backflip. So I have I have several dance moves that y'all will be picking. Okay. And then what you will do is as a group come up with you know, uh, uh, performance consisting of three different dance moves. Okay? Now, in order to dance, you typically have music, right? And the kind of music you listen to kind of reflects on what kind of dance moves you do, right? So it's really important to dance and the music that go together, right? Okay, so my other group is the type of music you will be dancing. Two dances. Got it? Okay. And I'll give you some time to kind of coordinate your performance so that way you can perform it in front of everybody. Y'all ready? Okay. Do you need the cards to remember? 
Okay, do you have a, like a name for your band or your group? Oh, the diaper heads. The diaper heads. Give it up for the diaper heads. <laughs> Why is this so scooted over to me? I really. That's a camera. I don't look at it. I don't <laughs> Are there any more six people? Oh, and then Gracie. Why? I think that's all. Yeah, I know.
So if if we had a pick, who do you think? They have one on one round. I think I think that guys did have a lot of yeah. energy. The girls did fantastic. Okay, so let's just take a deep breath and welcome Mr. Kevin right. to the stage. Cool. Yeah. Small, small group today. What's up, guys? What's up? Nice hat. How's it feel to lose? <laughs> Boomer's well, your here. team also makes the rush vote. Right? Hey, um, there's plenty of seats on the Oklahoma bandwagon for all you Georgia fans no, out there. No. So you're welcome okay. to join. No, okay. hey, no, thank you. I don't like football. I don't like football. You, either, can, just, so. you, can, you can just be an Oklahoma fan. I'll be okay with that. Well, Oklahoma also doesn't make the rush. Unless I'm in here. All right. So, let's start with Georgia. So, that game, that game we just played, we, weren't, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare for it. I need. We didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare for it. I need Somebody. Thank you. All right. Oh, uh, you'll there's plenty of, I'm gonna use a lot of you kids today. One of you you will get sacrificed to. I wanna be sacrificed. Sorry. Sorry. We'll get there. So how many of you um, like being prepared for something that you're supposed to do? Like you like to plan. And so you like to practice. You're like so when you play a football game, right, you're ready to go. You play goalie, you're ready to go, okay. Um, when you sing and dance, all right. So this the game we just played. We really weren't prepared for it. How how many of you like being in that scenario where you're just kind of thrown into something? Is that how many of you like that? Not a lot of us. John Carlos is the only one that likes that. It's it's a little difficult. It'd be hard because we're not ready for it, right? So um, I have a story when I was a uh, when I was a kid, your age. Um, I have a twin brother. Many of y'all didn't know that, but he doesn't. He doesn't live here. He lives in Carterville. Anyways, um, we did we did a lot of stuff together, and uh, we shared a room all the way until we graduated high school. Um, really close our whole lives, and still are, obviously. Um, but growing up with a twin was a little different because I always had somebody. Right? I was never. We were always together, and so we did fight a lot. None of you guys fight with your siblings, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 He starts it. He starts it. That's that's classic. That's classic. Um, so I, uh, me and my brother both ran cross country in middle school and high school. But in middle school, even though we practiced for it, I didn't really know what I was getting into um, until I ran that first race. And, and if any of you have done anything sports or not sports related, the first time you do something like you act on stage, or you sing on stage, um, or you uh, run cross country, play soccer, whatever the case may be. Even though you've gotten ready for it, sometimes when you get out there and it's your first time, it's still real nerve wracking. Is it? Is it not? You still be kind of nervous, and so, um, so you just have to do it, right? You just got to get out there and do it, and then you start to see as you do it more and more that uh, it's like, oh, that's not that's not so bad, or that wasn't so difficult. Um, so um, that's kind of where we're going. That's the direction we're headed in today. Um, how many of you ever get like pop quizzes at school? Do you like those? No. no. Why, why do we not like those? Wait, they're not. Wait, they pop out of nowhere. They pop out of nowhere, right? We're not, we don't expect them. We're not ready for them. And so uh, let's look at like how we would react at these situations. So we have um, different situations and different scenarios that we can, you can pick that up, JJ, that's fine. You can pick that up. Why don't you put it up for me? You can put it up for me if you'd like. That'd be helpful. Okay, then hold on to it, please. Thank you. All right, so um, when we have some difficult questions or stuff we need to need to know, where we where do we tend to look? The Bible. Bible, that's Bible. right. The Bible's a good, good place to start. So we're going to look in the Bible this week um, on some stuff from the Old Testament. So, um, who can tell me what we talked about last week? I was not here, so I need a good summary. No. Neither was I. I wasn't here either. Come on, bunch of slackers. I mean, there was, there was a small crowd. Okay, okay. Small crowd. All right. So there was a baby born. 
Oh, there's Moses. There we go. Okay. I wasn't here. How did I know that? You guys are the worst. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. All right, so what, what happened? Moses was born. Okay, go ahead, Haley. Give me a summary of last week. So Moses was born. Pharaoh said that he was going to kill all the Israelite baby boys. So Moses' mom put him in a basket, sent him down the river. The Pharaoh's daughter found Moses. And then Moses' sister said, I know a person who can care for the kid. Very good. That's good. That's right. So, so Moses grows up in Pharaoh's kingdom, right, in his castle, if you will, as a uh, as a Egyptian, even though he was born an, an Israelite. And so he was uh, he grew up in Pharaoh's castle. And as he's growing up, and as he becomes a young adult, he sees that the mistreatment of his people. And he's he's out and about one day in uh, in the kingdom, I guess you could say. And he sees an Egyptian um, mistreat one of his people, a, a, a slave, and he ends up killing the Egyptian uh, person. He kills him. And so um, because of that, he runs away. He leaves Egypt, and he goes to um, a town called uh, Midian. And there he met his wife. You want to know his wife's name? Either, of course you know his wife's name. What is it? Zipporah. Zipporah. All right, and so they they um, they thought they were done in Egypt. Like right, he had, he'd taken off, he left Egypt, he had fled Egypt. He was not close to Egypt anymore. Thought he was done. He had a wife. Right, he's settling down. He's starting to work the work the shepherd fields. It's nine to five. He's in the fields, forty hours a week, kind of thing. You know, two weeks vacation every year. I'm just kidding. He didn't have that. I don't know if they did that back then. But anyways, he's working in the fields as a shepherd. So now I need my first volunteer. Let's go with uh, Taylor. <laughs> Here, you hold my lamb. You can have a seat or stand up. I don't care what you do. Either one of you makes room, because there's going to be lots of you up here. <laughs> All right, so he's working the fields. Um, he's, he's out there sh shepherding his sheep, and he goes up to this... Uh, he sees this bush catch on fire, right? Yes, no, right? Yes. You all remember? Y'all you you heard this story before, I'm sure, right? Yeah. So I need a, I need a burning bush. Who wants to be my burning bush? Aspen wants to be my burning bush. I guess this green is supposed to be my burning bush. It's the only plant I see in there. Yeah. Here you go. Oh yeah, burning bush. All right. So he sees this burning bush, and uh, what was crazy about this burning bush? It's on fire, right? But um, the the bush is still alive, right? The, the plants aren't getting consumed by the flames. It's not burning up. It's just on fire. And so, if if you were Moses and you see this and you see this bush on fire, what would you do? Would you walk? Water. Would you be like, that's kind of weird, and look at it, yeah. or would you just kind of be like, meh, and keep going? I I'd probably just look at it. Probably look at it. So, so what if the bush talks to you? That would be super weird. All right, so. That's in the Bible. So uh, somebody read Exodus. Go ahead, Mills. Do not bring any furniture by his head. Do not bring candles. Make sure it's on his way down. Exodus, very fine. So look, our burning bush's sandals are already off. That's funny to me. All right. Um, so this bush is burning, and God speaks through this bush and tells Moses, look, don't come any closer. Um, you are standing on holy ground. And uh, what's crazy, he told um, Moses what he was going to do, like the future of his life, or soon-to-be future. And he told them that he's going to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, meaning he's going to free all of them from um, Egypt, from the Pharaoh's kingdom, right? Because they, they were treated really badly, and uh, that, that takes a lot of courage. And so at first, Moses was not um, too excited about it, uh, even though God... It was, it was God ordained. God told him, "Look, this is what you're going to do. This is, I need your help doing it." And Moses was like, "Ah, you know, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready to do it." Have any of us been there, where we get we get a task put on us, right? We get something asked of us, and we're like, "You know what? I don't know if I'm ready for that." Especially when it's something like really hard. I've I've been there. Right? I've been there. I have a basement that has it's unfinished. We lived in our house for two years. That's a big job, and I don't want to do it, but I guess somebody's got to do it, right? So um, 
Moses gets put in this spot where he's got a very tough situation for him, but God, through God, you know, anything's possible. So God, look, tells him, look, this is what you're going to do, and Moses negotiates with him, which I find strange that he negotiates with God, because God is God, and Moses is just a human. But eventually God agrees to send someone to help him. Um, so I need another volunteer, and let's go Millie, and I need someone to read Exodus 4.13. Go ahead, Benji. So who who knows uh, who the Lord sent with Moses? Who remembers? Tyler knows, but you can't guess, or you can't not guess. Aaron Hank. Aaron. Aaron, good job. That's Henry, by the way. Aaron Hanks is what I like to call him. But Henry, good job. So Aaron was who? Who was Aaron? Josephus' brother. Josephus? <laughs> Josephus, Mo, Moses, you know, tomato, tomato, one, one and the same. So Aaron goes with them, right? And Aaron's going to help Moses speak in these tough situations. He's going to be courage for Moses. He's going to help him through it. All right, because this, this was a pretty big job. And uh, Moses, you know, just like we talked about a minute ago, Moses didn't really feel prepared for it, or he was even up, up to the task. All right, so they're going to go back into Egypt. And they're going to tell the Pharaoh, which would be super hard. Like, like what if I went up to Shannon and told him, look, because he, he's our head pastor. And I said, Shannon, um, you're not doing a very good job. I'm going to take all the people from this church and start my own church. That would be super crazy and weird. But that's essentially what Moses did. He, he went to Pharaoh and he said, look, I'm going to take all these people and um, we're going to leave. I'm going to free all the Israelites from your clutches. How do you think Pharaoh responded to that? Like, no. Was he like, oh, that's cool, bro? Yeah, any day. I need a Pharaoh. I need a Pharaoh. Come on, Jack. Come lord over your people. You can't hit the Pharaoh, but that might turn into snakes later. Ah, Pharaoh. Yeah, dude, that is sweet. I might be wearing this on City Station Halloween. Pharaoh, we got a Pharaoh. All right, so he tell Aaron and, and uh, Moses tell Pharaoh, look, we're going to free all of our people. And Pharaoh's like, ha ha, you got jokes, that's really funny. And so, because you're coming up here, I need another volunteer. Because you're coming up here, yeah. come here, um, Carson. You're going to work harder. I'm going to double your work day. That's a real brick, so be careful with it. Instead of 40 hour work weeks, you're working 80. Command him to work 80 hour work weeks. Yeah, there we go. Get commanded. So, they're going to work. More and even harder. They're doubling their shifts, not even doubling their pay. It's just crazy. Uh, they didn't get paid. I need somebody to read Exodus 6 1. Go ahead, Tyler. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Now you will see what I do to Pharaoh. Because of my power and might, because of the mighty hand of the Lord, because of the mighty hand of the Lord, and because of the mighty hand of the Lord, and because of the mighty hand of the Lord, and because of the mighty hand of the Lord, and because of the mighty hand of the Lord, so, the Lord tells Moses, look, here's what I'm going to do to Pharaoh, and here's how I'm going to do it, and he's going to send uh, all these plagues and just different stuff into Egypt that's going to force Pharaoh, essentially, to let, his, let Moses' people go. And so, um, one of the first plagues he did, or it may have been the first one, I need another volunteer. Um, come here, Colt. Colton. All right, so Colton, you are the Nile River. Be the Nile River. Good. Do not drop that. we got to use it for two more services. All right, Aaron. Aaron, I need you to dip your stick in the Nile, Nile River. Come back, Nile River. Dip your stick in the Nile River. Don't open it. You can leave it on. Boom. All right, so the first plague he did, who knows? What did he do to the Nile, Nile River? What did he do, Leah? Turn the river into blood. That is wild. And so, so the, the instead of it being water, it is now blood. So what do fish live in? So what happens to all the fish in the river? They all die. They all die. All right. And so, so there's one thing God has done that He would promise that He would do to Pharaoh. All right. I need another volunteer. Um, come here, Damon. Damon. 
Damon. Rivalry. Damon is our flag of frogs. So they sent frogs. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to go wide lens on this thing. They sent frogs and they were everywhere. They covered everything, and from the, the dining room tables to the closets to Pharaoh's Miss Pharaoh's walk-in closet. She was probably not happy about that. All right, so we have frogs everywhere. And what happened after the frogs? There's no. Who knows what happened after the frogs? Besides Tyler. Oh, flies. Ah, good job. Benjamin. Bunch of flies came. And gnats. And they covered everything. Ah, could you imagine frogs and gnats everywhere? Now the frogs are probably pretty happy. Right? Oh, yeah, that's true. You got, you got flies, you got a gnat. No, I, need, I, need a, I need a gnat person. It's supposed to be my gnat. It's going to be a gas. Don't worry, girl. I'll get you. I'll get you. We got, you got plenty of opportunity as well. <laughs> There's a lot to play. So we have gnats. We have flies. We have, a, we have frogs. The Nile River has turned to blood. We have a burning bush at one point. All right. What, what is next? Anyone know what happens next? Uh, All the livestock gets killed. You want to? You don't want to be my cow? All right. Come on. You can be my dead livestock. Savage. No. Here, there's room over here. Give me All right. There we go. We got more room. So now we have dead livestock everywhere. <laughs> This one maybe is perhaps the worst one in my opinion. Is what did he do after the livestock? Does anyone remember? Besides Tyler? Tyler, if you get this one, I'll be impressed. Henry? Oh, that's close. So he sent uh, he covered everybody's skin with boils and sores. Ooh, that would be brutal. Come here, Gracie. Gracie is our boils. Could you imagine that? Just being covered up in those things? Ah, oh, man, that would be miserable. All right, after, uh, after the boils, what happened? Haley? We're, we're getting close to the locusts. We're like, come on, we just want the locusts. Come on, no locusts. Remember? Hellstorm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the hellstorm. Who wants to be my hell? Hell, Isabel wants to be hell. That rhymes, word. Can you have the ice? Bars. Two down, stretching together. All right, so we have hell. Now, what came next? Locusts. Oh, yeah. Locusts. Locusts. All right, I need two locusts. I need. There's one locust. Who wants to be my other locust? Henry, come on. There's my other locust. Golly, but we're not done. We're not done. What came after the locust? What did the locusts do? Who remembers what the locusts did? They ate everything. Their crops, the burning bush. All right, I need, what was after the locusts? Anyone remember? There's only, there's only two left. Darkness. Who wants to be my darkness? Come here, Haley. Haley's finally up there. Haley's finally made it. All right, we got to blindfold you. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna be the only one who's not up there. All right. Who out here? Who, who, who that is left is a firstborn child. Tucker, come here, Tucker. Tucker. So the firstborn dies. The firstborn got murdered. No! All right, listen up. This is important. So, okay. That was very bad. You gotta, you gotta be up here with the other oh. legs. Okay, so listen up. We have so the last one. So in between each of these, each of these plagues, um, Pharaoh promises Moses that he'll let his people go. Then his heart gets hardened, and he refuses. And then another plague is sent, and that repeats. Over and over and over until finally he's like, All right, God says, You want to keep testing me? Let's do this. And so he kills the firstborn of every um, parent in Egypt. 
That's what? right. Well, the angel of death came and killed them all. Unless, Unless you had the lamb's blood, blood on your door, right? The Passover. And so there was a great, in the Bible it says there was a great cry out that night. It was, it was very sad. It would be very sad to be a part of that, which is, is, which is not okay. And so um, after that, when um, Moses, or Pharaoh, finally agrees to let uh, the Israelites go, and they they leave Egypt. And as they're leaving Egypt, because so much bad stuff has happened, the Egyptians hand them gold and silver. And they're just like, take it, please, because your God has done all this stuff to us. Alright, good job, Plex. Good job, everybody. Put everything back in the treasure box. This is not in the treasure box. These are treasure chests. The hell is melting. The I got a cow and it was awesome. A cow? No, it's a lion. Oh! Yeah. I didn't expect you, boy. Yeah, I was a good day. Thank you, Tucker. So, a lot of us have heard this, this story before, right? We've heard the story of the Ten Plagues and, um, and the uh, Exodus. That's why it's called Exodus. The book of Exodus is the Exodus from Egypt. Um, into eventually what would become the promised land. Uh, so for hundreds of years and generations, the, the Israelites lived in Egypt and they were enslaved and forced to do the will of Pharaoh. So whatever he wanted them to do, they did. So build this pyramid or build this building or farm this land, they did it. And, and uh, they did not get anything in return for it. So this was a, an oppressed people and um, it was God's people and so they let him God, through Moses and Aaron, um, helped deliver them from Egypt. So uh, it's neat to see um, how God saved the Israelites in the story through through all of the plagues, and you know that's that's uh, God interacting there. That's just that's God stuff. I mean, that's not normal stuff that you see that's going to happen. You know, we don't we don't see that in this day and age, right? We don't see um, plagues come through the land to free us from our like mean principle. Or from our school teacher, right? Uh, but the, the whole uh, bottom line here is that um, it took courage for Moses to go stand in front of Pharaoh and tell him, no, this is what's going to happen. And not only did he have to do it uh, once, but he did it over and over again before and after each, each plague. And, and finally, Pharaoh's heart um, was turned until they were, they were uh, leaving Egypt. And I'm sh I don't know, well, next week we might continue the story. Uh, but um, we might see what happens eventually to Pharaoh and his the, the Egyptians. And you guys probably already know, um, but it's it's always good to cover. So um, there's a there's a question that I want you to think about after worship when we go into small group time, and it is um, what have you had to do that you didn't feel ready for? So Moses didn't feel ready for uh, this task that God gave him. He didn't feel ready for. Um, the the pre previous people. He didn't feel like he was up to the job. You know, he tried to talk himself out of it uh, time and time again. And then uh, God agreed to send Aaron with him to help him out. And so I want you to think about that question. Um, if something for school, sports, growing up, right? Middle school's tough. We sixth graders know that. Um, it, it's, it's just different. As we get older, it, it gets different. Life gets harder and it's not easy. So um, think about that question. As we get into small group, um, who's doing worship today? Delissa? Delissa. All right. I'm going to pray, and um, then we're going to worship. Father God, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for um, the story of Moses and just uh, how it shows us courage and how to be brave um, when we face uh, difficult situations and adversity, God. So um, I just ask that during this time of worship, uh, we come to you and we, and we worship you, and uh, we sing your songs and just... Um, understand what that means here, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.